it's been a while since I posted a video, but it's been crazy at work. But today I got my order in from Blood and Skulls Industries. I'm working on a Ultramarines contract and needed um, assault cannon turrets for Razorbacks. And unfortunately, at the time, Games Workshop was sold out of the Crusader sprue and were sold out of the uh, Dark Angels vehicle sprue, so I could not use those to do upgrades. So Blood and Skulls hooked me up, went on his eBay store, found two turrets with, and then I ordered two, um, a set of, two sets of these. Each one of his sets comes with two guns. So there's two assault cannon turrets or uh, his, um, or rotor cannons or whatever you want to call them. And then I got the um, parts for the turret. Now, I already went ahead and put together one just to see what it looked like and kind of puzzle out the uh, assembly. His stuff doesn't come with instructions. So, um, you know, I kind of went and did everything and put it together as, as I saw, thought it should go. So basically this is what the finished product looks like. Um, everything on this is glued together. It does have some movement in the turret, but not a lot. I think that's just because I dribbled some glue down in there. But that's, I mean, this is pretty sharp. It's nice looking. Um, the cannons look really good on there. They're really crisp. So I'm gonna go through how I put this thing together so that way you guys can see it. And then I'll be ready to uh, dive in and get some more painting done tonight and get these two Razorbacks out of the way. So in the bag, you get the two, two turret sides and there's some other pieces in here. These are the only pieces that are required to build the turret right here. The two sides, base plate, uh, the weapons mount, and then this is the eyelet on the top. In addition to the, the turret itself, you get three back pieces. You get what looks like uh, gas tanks for like a heavy flamer or a plasma gun. You get like a big power pack. This could be like for a melta gun or last cannons. And then you get a ammo crate. Now on the back of all of this stuff, you can see there's a little hole. It's set up for magnetizing. I don't have magnets this small, otherwise I would probably magnetize these, but that's okay. Same thing with those guns on the back, magnet hole. Um, these are fully set up to be magnetized. You see there on one side of the turret, there's a hole there for the front where the gun goes. On the back, there's a magnet there for the rear piece. So technically, you could set this up to be um, all 100% magnetized. I don't do that because, um, call me lazy, but honestly, if I want any other turrets from Blood and Skulls, I'll just order them. Now, working with his plastic, it is his resin is very, very, very rigid. So, I'm gonna clip these pieces off here and then I'm gonna clean them up. Normally, his flash isn't too bad, and this time it's not. It's very paper thin and easy to clean off. So I'm gonna start with this piece. Use my clippers. This isn't as um, soft as the Forge World resin at all. Like, not soft at all. I'm gonna shave it off with an extremely sharp X-Acto knife. I already cut myself with this thing a couple of times. And normally when I do it, I drag the knife backwards across what I need to clean up. That seems like I had to come out nice and clean. Clean all the shavings off and everything. So that's the top piece. Looks like the uh, target or eye. I can't wait to paint these things. He's, his stuff is... Uh, this, when I paint this, this, I've put several of his stuff, uh, several of his kits together, but I've not yet been able to paint one because they're on my painting palette for other projects that have kind of got sidelined due to contract work or life in general. So let me get this all cleaned up here. You can see, you can clip down pretty close. This is going on the other side, so I'm just gonna scrape it. I'm gonna worry about filing it down. You can see here, there's not a whole lot of flash. A little bit here and there, but we're gonna file all that off. This part, get down there. His uh, molding, if you can see here, there's actually a pretty, a pretty deep cut right at the entry point to the piece itself. So if you cut it, most of that's gonna come off. And I can just use the clippers to clip the rest of it. And then I'll file that down, get it ready to, uh, get it ready to, for the assembly on the other pieces. Again, his, uh, his molding is pretty damn precise. This guy hand molds everything, okay? This is not a machine shop. They don't have, he doesn't have molding machines. Everything is done by hand. Uh, the owner, Tom, he's a completely nice. I, you know, I'm digging it. We carry on little, you know, sideline conversations about this, that, and the other. 
and he just makes really, really nice stuff. I'm really glad that I um, ran into his stuff on one of the forums because it's made doing some of these minor conversions or some of the more major conversions I want to do eventually um, into really, really nice and easy to do projects. Um, so, yeah, everything cleans up really well. Now, I'm using an emery board. When it comes to resin, I use an emery board because you can take more off at a time. Like, I need to get that dip out of there. So I'm going to use the emery board. And they're cheap. I think these are actually Revlon. Uh, it's really cheap. I can I get a bag of them for a couple bucks at Wally. And then the light side is the light is the uh, light sandpaper side. And that's the side I use when I'm doing most of my work. Sometimes if I got to take a big chunk off, I'll use the other side. It does file it pretty rough. When I would normally on anything that's going to be external facing. I will go ahead and uh, I'll hit with the needle file, but for the most part, and nice too because you can bend these, you can bend them pretty well. So, okay, there's the top desk. Now this goes, and the way I assemble the other one is the little dip thing here goes in the back. Okay, now on this, you can see there, there's a little eyeball yeah, right there, if you can see it. There's a little eyeball right there, so what I'm going to do is when I assemble this, I'm going to put the eyeball to the front. Now, if you compare this to the Razorback kit, it's backwards from what you would expect. But I'm okay with that because I dig the way it looks. So we're gonna go ahead and slap some glue in here. On this resin, only use super glue. I would not use plastic. I have not tried plastic glue on this. I might with some of the spare parts just to kind of see how it goes. But this is good hard, hard resin. And we'll go ahead and use the, uh, I'll use the uh, super glue on there. I'm gonna set that to the side and let it dry. Do a little bit more cleanup in here. And you see here, I mean, that's just, that's brilliant right there. It's just pretty. So what I'll do is when I put the glue in there, a little dot there, a little dot there, assemble it over that piece with the single hole towards the back because that's where this piece is gonna go, like so. And that's the back of the turret. So I'm going to put a little dot here, a dot there. I'm going to spread it out so it doesn't squish out. That's the one thing I don't want to have happen is have it squish out and then glue the turret in place. The tolerance on this stuff is extremely tight. Um, his, uh, his manufacturing process is pretty good. His design process is fantastic. So there, we've got that part on there. So now I can go ahead here in the back. I'm gonna slap those the little blob of glue in there. Take my uh, ammo box, put it on there. Now see again, that's going to limit how far it can travel. Now see on the finished one, it's not traveling that far. I don't think I got this back piece all the way lodged in there, so that's why the travel is limited. That's okay though. And well, there's that. And pretty much that's the, the turret. That's about as far as I need to go with it. Um, I do have the two guns which I'm going to mount in there, but I want to kind of give this a little bit more time to dry. Right now. So these pieces will do as I normally do with my extra partial blood and skulls. They go over to my bits box and get used for other projects. Now, this piece is really cool because, well again, vision eyeball thing to the front. You glue this in here and it covers up the pivot mechanism. So on this one, just a little dot of glue on the side, a little dot of glue on the side again. Um, this resin takes super glue really well, unlike the Forge World stuff where it takes forever to actually seal up. This stuff takes it really, really well. It um, really dries really fast. So now I'm going to go ahead and clean the guns up. Uh, this is the second set of guns that I've used from him. The first one for light laser cannons that I used for my, uh, my Mark IIa uh, Land Raiders. These are the exact, the actual back pieces on this are exact same size. So his stuff is very, very, very modular, which I dig because, you know, some of us are those nutsoids who want to build every variant of their rhinos and be able to swap their guns out. And I know, I usually use the same ones all the time. On this one, I will build the uh, twin-linked heavy bolter or twin-linked glass cannon turrets to go with it. Um, 
the tops of his guns usually have a really, really rough mold line on there, but that's where the emery board comes out. Just file that all off. And the bottoms. On these, you can tell the tops and bottoms. The top will always have the slope sides, if you can see there. Yeah, the slope sides on there, that's the top. And the square sides are the bottom. Get that back piece all filed. And take this. Again, I'm not using any magnets. If I did, I would just have to glue, put glue down inside the hole and attach the magnet. And then glue the magnet down in there on both the front and the back make sure your polarities are right um, but now just hold these in place try to keep them as straight as possible and that will dry up and then bada boom bada bing and this is he's his kits are really good because he does make like the single last cannon mount and then on this side there's one that has like it looks like a plasma gun with dual barrels um, that would work great for a Laz Cannon Twin Laz uh, Twin Plasma Turret. Um, again, his stuff is modular, so if these were, you know, um, done with the magnets, I would be able to do take and uh, swap the front and rear pieces out to do different types of uh, different types of turret. Honestly, um, the Crusader Sprue from Games Workshop cost eighteen or nineteen dollars. Uh, his turret plus two cannons of my choice. Uh, it was 15, uh, not including shipping. It was like uh, 19 with shipping, and these are a lot nicer. And you could possibly build every turret, including a heavy bolter, las cannon, what have you. So, yeah, I'm all about his turret there. So, um, one thing to note here, though, is with the height that it sits, if you look, the antenna from the cop commander's copula gets loose. Uh, it hits that turret, that thing. So, I'm actually clipping the antennas off. And have to file it flat and then I'll paint over it so now I've got my turrets ready for both of the racer packs you can see them back out look at that um, quick easy conversions didn't take a lot of time it took honestly between the two of them maybe maybe 30 minutes to assemble them both um, again, is, the kits are just, they're impressive as hell. They're amazing with the, um, with the quality and the detail. Again, I can't speak, I can't say, any, I cannot give him more higher praise. Tom is a really, really nice guy. And it's nice to see a little guy out there that it's not his main line of work. He does, he keeps up with it. A lot of people are using this stuff out there. I, I don't think I would actually use any other third party manufacturer stuff to make vehicles. I would just, I'll stick with using his. So. Hope you guys enjoyed. Um, if you have any questions, uh, you know, hit me through the comments. I'll be more than happy to, uh, you know, answer them. And uh, I give a, I'll put a link down in the, the description of this uh, of this video, so that way you can go pay Tom a visit on eBay and go buy some of his stuff. Again, you will not be. It is definitely absolutely worth it. He's got some of the best product on the market. All right, you guys have a good one.